Alrighty, let me summarize the installation of these nut plates into the side panel that's going to hold the nose cone on. Initially, I fit the nose cone up and had it clamped in place, and then I drew a line, a red line here, along the edge of where the nose cone piece is at. This, is, this red line is the edge of the nose cone. I then came in by one inch, and I drilled my holes through both the nose cone and the aluminum sheet with a number 40 drill bit, and then used a Clico to hold the nose cone in place. And I did that all the way down in five spaces along the side. Later on I came back and took the nose cone off and I increased the size of this center hole here, the pilot hole that I drilled, using a number 10 drill bit. Number 10. Later on, when I got ready to install the nose cone, I used my tool here that I have. This is a tool that is called a nut plate guide and as you can see I have a pin on one side, two pins on one side, a guide pin and a centering pin and then on the other side there's just the centering pin and some holes. These holes are the space for drilling out the rivet holes for the nut plate. I then put the center pin of the tool, the centering pin, into that number 10 hole and I lined it up so that the edge of my tool was as perpendicular to this line as possible. And then I drilled my first hole which is on the other side of the centering hole which is also opposite of, of the, this pin sticking out. There's two pins on this side. Once I drilled that first hole, I just pulled the tool out, turned it over, and then used the second pin. I put the center pin in the hole and used the second pin as a locking pin to go into the number 40 hole that I drilled for my rivet. I then went to the opposite side of the tool and drilled my second hole, a number 40 hole. After I finished up drilling out all of the holes and getting ready to put the nut plates in, I drilled out the center hole first using a quarter inch drill bit and then a second drill my final drill in the center hole is a 17 64 inch drill hole I then begin to deburr all of the holes on both sides and then used a Clico to hold the nut place in place on one end and then put my rivet in and pull the, the uh, Clico out and then rivet the second hole and the nut plate is now mounted. Now I don't know if you're going to be able to see that on this video but the nut plate floats inside the back here and down inside this hole if you can see it I'm moving that nut plate around in its mount. This allows the nut plate to float which gives you the option when you're putting the nose coat on that that thing will be able to float around a little bit and give you a little bit of leeway to aid in the installation of the nose cone once it's on the airplane. Now we'll go up on the back side here and I don't know if I'll be able to zoom in on this or not but we'll take a close look here. You can see that I have both of my rivets pulled and the nut plate itself, the body of it, is sitting flush up against the aluminum and is pulled in tight. And then here you can see the where the nut plate itself is able to float around inside of that holder. That's all there is to it. Uh, we now have the nut plates all installed and I'm ready. I can go ahead and put my drill up the holes in my nose cone and mount that but that's for another video at another time in the meantime that's done and uh, my next step of course will then be to get at the back side of the panel and start installing my wiring I've simply run wire through these holes at this time it's not uh, installed by any means final run at this point I got a lot of extra wire. I did that just so that I would be able to uh, wire up my instruments. Have enough in the wire loom. It has to be bundled together. 
Now I did take and uh, drill some holes in the side of the ribs here. Let's see if I can get focused in on this. And run my wire bundle through it. And then I've put some plastic protective edging around here. It's called Chicken Track. And you can buy that from Aircraft Spruce Supply. You just cut off a piece of it and curl it up. And it's, it's got these little... I don't know if you can see this or not. you got these little tracks on both sides of it. I'm not sure how well this camera will focus. It has... Uh, there we go. <laughs> not exactly the world's most uh, best camera for using for this project, but it's what I have. Anyways, you can see the little tracks there. And this just folds up. This, uh, of course, before you put the wire in, you want to fill that hole with this. And it creates a grommet to protect the wires from the edges of the metal. Now they do make rubber grommets, but I like to use chicken track because it's fairly cheap. And it's very effective and easy to put in. And you can cut it to any size you want. Now I will go through and take a drop of super glue and super glue around the edges of this on both sides. And that will hold that into place. And that's something that I will do here in just a little while. I'll get my wire bundle all put together. Now you can see that I have some wire is covered with a, looks like a white skin. And that's exactly what we call it. We call it snake skin. Let me see if I can get a piece here. Now snake skin is a, a loom. It's a, a loom wire that fits over your wires in the bundle. And it provides a sheath of protection. And you can just slide it on, if I can get a piece of it here and uh, push it together. Well, I'm trying to hold the camera with one hand and pull the wire with the other. But you can see here where it, it wants to bunch up. Now, some people call that a, a Chinese handcuff or finger handcuff. It's the same principle. It pushes in in one way and pulls out the other. When it pulls out, it clings and it won't allow anything to, to get out of it. So... It's a good way to protect your wire. I have a bunch of loose wires inside of here that I've, like these little uh, 20 gauge wires here that I'm running in my bundle, okay? And so I've put them inside of this loom with snake skin to protect them from abrasion. I also have this braided, or this uh, wire here that has a uh, braid on the inside of it. it's got this plastic hard hard plastic sleeving to protect it and then on the inside is a wire braid that eventually will become a ground these are going to be my wires for the EGT and CHT there's four wires inside of this bundle in each one of them and it also has an outer braid a, a steel braid with uh, for grounding so to protect the signals from getting injected into this wire bundle and that will eventually be grounded in in the video covering the wiring techniques and crimping and uh, terminate terminating wires will cover how to make a splice an environmental aircraft approved splice along with how to run a solder ground on the braiding that's on the inside of this wire to ground signals from the engine into the airframe ground and prevent noise from getting into your circuits for your audio. Now that's it for today. Thank you.